Back off, Mama Bear. What are you doing? The ink on my buddy went nuclear. That means evil is just around the corner. So your little peach could be a bowel-sucking hell beast. Mom, what's a chainsaw geek doing here? Bruce Campbell returns for season three in Ash vs. the Evil Dead on the Stars Network, and this time around he promises fans some unexpected surprises. And now the shoddiest, the slashiest, the grooviest, the one and only Bruce Campbell joins me right now. Bruce! Hi, Jeff. Greetings from Las Vegas. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's right. You played Elvis in Bubba Hotep. That's right, baby. All right, Bruce, last time I spoke to you was October 15th, 2016, like 16 months ago for the, we talked about season two of Ash vs. the Evil Dead, and you have never called me once, ever. I thought we were friends. Well, this is just a professional relationship that you and I have. We're only going to be talking every couple of years. You know, we ain't going to hang out. Unless you want to. I do. I'm down, but you got to come to Vegas. So, you know, get down here and we'll hang out. You do got to come to Vegas because uh, you can see Evil Dead the musical there live. I did see it. It was really crazy. It was really good. By the way, I finally got to check a box. I performed live on the Vegas Strip. I finally did it. I checked that box at the Hard Rock Cafe this past summer did a game show called Last Fan Standing, by golly, live on the Strip. That's, uh, that's one thing I can say now. I, I've performed on the Vegas Strip. Well, Bruce, playing the Las Vegas Strip is no small feat, so you're in good company. Uh, Liberace, Don Rickles. Good company. Good company. Barry Manilow, only the best. So Ash is back for season three. What can fans expect? I hear that we're going to get schooled. That's, that's the big rumor. Well... I think Ash is going to get schooled this season. Uh, he's, we're going to find out he's got a daughter, so that changes his life forever. Uh, and hopefully it'll, it'll beat some sense into him, so he won't be such an idiot and a jerk. He'll have to be a responsible citizen and save the world, because we're going to go a little more with the uh, mythology uh, this season. And then we're going to blow the doors off the last two episodes. So you keep talking about the mythology of Ash versus the Evil Dead and using Joseph Campbell's Power of the Myth. You know, George Lucas used that, that same foundation for all the Star Wars films. So that's a winning, successful formula. Well, you know, we inspired George Lucas to make those movies, so it's, it's only natural. Now, season two of Ash vs. the Evil Dead was so bloody and disgusting, and I know you have a lot of praise for your stunt crew. Do they go above and beyond for season three? Yes, my, my hardest working stuntman, Raisho Vezolev, uh, I would hear him getting hurt pretty much every day. And I'd, I'd listen to it, and then I'd shout across the studio, Raisho, how's that going for you? And I would hear this. It would start with an, he dropped the F bomb. He'd say, blank this, <laughs> what it is, blank this noise, boss. So he, he would be disgusted with his job, but he's great. He's great at it. And I make him look great. I make, I make his dialogue hum. I'm his dialogue double. I hear season three even has more creatures for us to be frightened about. It does. And we also, we're going to end it with a B-A-N-G. Uh, we're going to fight the mother of all deadites this season. And it's not going to go well. Uh, Bruce, you're a fan favorite, so I was wondering, can you tell us about what's it like when you meet your fans and the fan encounters? Do they, are they just give you suggestions or uh, how are they like when they approach you? Fans are funny. They, um, they get all excited. They'll memorize every line of dialogue in your movie. They'll wait in line for two, three hours, and they'll come up to the table and they won't say a word. So my advice to fans is you got three hours. Just write a note to yourself, like come up with a little something. And a hint, when you meet your, one of your favorite actors, don't do the obvious. Like, I met William Shatner a few years ago. I didn't go Star Trek. I went T.J. Hooker. That was a new angle. And he liked that a lot because I didn't do the normal thing. So, um, yeah, but fans are fun. They're fun, but they're just a little timid. Well, I think you're very intimidating. I met you at one of your book signings one time, and I was very intimidated. Uh, by the way, you still owe me 20. Uh, you won't be getting that back. Bruce, I wonder if you can set the record straight. I've heard an urban legend that uh, author Stephen King helped finance the first Evil Dead movie. Is there any truth to that? 
He helped with two movies, the, two, two, the first two Evil Deads he helped. Um, the first one, what he did is he saw the movie, it was being sold overseas at the Cannes Film Festival. Uh, Stephen King was there watching something else. He happened to see the movie and wrote a ridiculous endorsement of it in a magazine article. And um, we asked him if we could use it, and he very graciously said yes. The most ferociously original horror film of the year is really what it was. And it, it, it really set up a force field of protection around us. All the reviewers after that started to go, yeah, I like it too. Whereas before he endorsed us, we got some terrible reviews. And then later, Stephen King was directing Maximum Overdrive with Dino De Laurentiis. He ran into a random crew member that was trying to work with us, but we couldn't get the money for the movie. They got talking. Hey, what are you working on? Oh, Evil Dead 2, but they can't get the money. Stephen King goes, what? Calls up Dino. Hey, Dino, you should make this movie. Bam. I think we had the deal in 15 minutes. Now, most people ask actors, uh, where do they keep their Oscar? Well, you don't have an Oscar, but you have an Ash Puppet. Where do you keep your Ash Puppet, Bruce? In a warehouse, because it's good enough for him. Now, there's already a rumor for season four of Ash vs. The Walking Dead. The Stars Network, are they treating you right, Bruce? Are they treating you like the B-movie star you are? Uh, Stars has been very good to us by doing this show, and this is what fans need to understand. They got to kiss Stars' butt a little bit if they want this to stay on the air. You got to get the Stars app. It's a free thing. You download it. You got free seven days. Do you know how much you can watch in seven days for free? So... Uh, they've been really good, but what we need to do is connect with fans because sometimes their fans go, oh, I'll wait for it to come to Netflix, the platform that they already have. Well, if you keep waiting, you might wait forever. Know what I mean, Jelly Bean? I do, Peggy Sue. I do. Bruce, thanks so much for speaking to me today. Good luck with season three of Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Make sure you come to Las Vegas, and when you do, the first round of readers is on me. Deal. Thanks a lot. Good luck. All right, make sure to check out season three of Ash vs. the Evil Dead on the Stars Network. And for more reviews and interviews, surf on over to my website at VegasFilmCritic.com. Check me out on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I'm back on Snapchat. Uh, also, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe, uh, thumbs up, and comment below. And also, check out my podcast. I'm on iTunes. Yeah, there's enough of me to go around. I'm Jeffrey Howard in Las Vegas. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time.